my top books of 2017. Now these are not books that are necessarily released in 2017, it's just what I read in 2017. So to start out with, one of my top books was uh, Valis by Philip K. Dick. And Valis is a science fiction story centered around a character called Horse Lover Fat. I'm led to believe that it's he really thought these things would actually happen to him. So someone came to deliver some pharmaceutical prescription drugs to his house. Uh, he saw a piece of jewelry this girl was wearing and got struck in the head with a pink colored light and really believed most of this was actually happening to him. So Vela stands for Vast Active Living Intelligence System and it travels through his idea that basically he was being paranoid and thinking that everyone was after him. That being said, this is an amazing book. I did listen to it. It was um, an audiobook that I borrowed. And I just, it was a, just an amazingly well thought out world for someone who was essentially crazy. But yeah, loved it. So this year I also read uh, most of the Lunar Chronicles by Marissa May. I got up to winter and was dissuaded by the length of the tome that is winter. The first book in the series is Cinder and that settles around a girl called Cinder who has cyborg parts replacing um, parts of her. Uh, she doesn't know why there are these things on her but she is very adept at fixing technology and it follows her story of meeting the prince, etc. I loved the elements of the near, dystop uh, near future dystopian style with people living on the moon and hence the Lunar Chronicles bit and the, uh, the technology involved in her progression through this story. I will finish it eventually because I really need to know what's happening. This year I also finished the first three books in the Mistborn trilogy, hence three. Um, there is a second trilogy in, set in that world but not with the same characters. I really adored the magic system which is something you've probably heard before. Um, the, it was incredibly well set up and someone who likes science it, the idea of them taking different elements of metals into themselves and that causing a reaction within them really appealed to me and the way I um, read and create the world. Brian Sanderson is an incredible world builder and I could feel myself in that you know, orange sunned, murky, distant future where things don't grow, aren't green, and it was really quite heart wrenching the whole trilogy. And I basically read them one after the other, which is unusual for me. I usually sort of stop on the third one, but this lot, I loved them. I'm going to read the rest. And that was my first introduction to Brian Sanderson, Brandon. Brandon Sanderson, so I'll be continuing in his worlds. The only book that I read that was actually released this year was Carve the Mark by Veronica Roth. I really adored this series. I sort of likened it a bit to Dragon Riders of Pern, where it's obviously set on a different planet and it's technological and it's got sci-fi elements to it, but it's also got fantasy elements and I really liked the main character Kyra um, and her struggle to come to terms with the horrible things that her brother was making her do. Um, I haven't seen much in the way of reviews or um, this coming up on lists of 2017 books so um, I think it's a bit underrated. I um, 
found it to be an incredibly visceral sort of read and moments where she was either torturing others or being mentally and physically abused by her brother um, <clears throat> it, it evoked a lot in me and I really appreciated the writing style that Veronica Roth has so and I gave this one a four star rating on Goodreads um, and I'm going to be reading the next book in this series. Uh, the next book I read it was actually um, one of the few non-fiction books I read and it was an audio book that I got out as well was um, Down and Out in Paris and London by George Orwell and it chronicled his time while he was destitute basically um, in obviously Paris um, and London and I was shocked and amazed at the systems that Paris had in place that London did not and I know that it was obvious that London was trying uh, London and England um, was trying to put these ideas into place so that people were looked after. I was struck by the systems that London had put and London and England had put into place to help people in these situations and how antiquarian they were. The it, it developed the tramp um, nation of England because any of these places that you um, stayed overnight because you had nowhere else you weren't allowed to stay there for more than a day otherwise you went into a jail type system or a workhouse type system you also weren't allowed to sleep on benches or anything like that and whereas in Paris there was places where you could go to go um, where people would come and give you work and they would inevitably most of the work that George Orwell had was as a waiter uh, and he would be fed while he was there and it was just a horrible horrible system that he was lucky enough to get a job set up for him so he could get himself out of it but the, what struck me the most was all the men in there and it was mostly men that were never going to get out and it was incredible I, I like ones that make me feel something and this this did it really well Speaking of ones that make me feel something, I actually read a horror book this year, which I don't read much horror and I want to read more. It's just I've had some fairly average experiences with horror that have been highly recommended. Um, but this year I read House of, uh, sorry, The Haunting of Hill House by Shirley Jackson. I really enjoyed the experience simply because at one point I was sitting on my couch in my nice sunny lounge room and something went thump in the house and I jumped a foot in the air. Now I'm the easiest person to get a jump scare out of in movies but not from books. Um, it's a rare thing. It's much like the rareness of me actually laughing um, physically laughing loudly whilst reading a book it's a rare thing so I'm quite keen to get more of those sort of, uh, experiences out of my reading so that one was most enjoyable in a kind of scary way I have been delving into some classic sci-fi for the last few years and this year I finally got round to um, the Foundation series by Isaac Asimov um, although the first book I wasn't, I, I liked it, it wasn't great, but Foundation and Empire, I loved the massive well that he'd moved into and although he cops a lot of flack for not writing females, I still enjoyed the world building that he'd made and the science and the mathematics behind the prediction system and what they had to do and uh, the the dead on and I know it's written but the dead on uh, predictions of when these people had to appear and give notice that 
something was going to happen and you have to make these decisions. So, uh, yeah, Foundation and Empire. I've got to finish the series, but oh, classic sci-fi. Absolutely classic. Also, I am a big steampunk fan. I normally like my steampunk in a comic book fashion, but I finally got around to reading Mortal Engines. I just found out it's being made into a movie, which I'm quite keen about. It looks pretty good. Uh, I read the first two in the series by Philip Reeve, and wow, these the idea that towns and cities have become these big leviathans crawling across the landscape and eating up smaller uh, cities and towns and the Darwinism of the whole thing uh, uh, and everything's run on steam power and and the characters in it are, are just flawed and amazing and I've got to read the rest of it.